the body produces more oxytocin, which is the bonding hormone. You work out and then you get a more oxygen to your brain, which allows you to focus more, right? Mm -hmm. And so all of these, this physical, these physical activities lead to these spiritual qualities. And so um, the way that I look at it is you cannot, yes, there is um, the quest for spirituality. But you cannot fully find that spirituality or express that spirituality without using the tools that your body has to help you experience them more. Let's learn how our next guest gets up, dress up, and show up on purpose. Enjoy the episode. Hello, morning enthusiasts. Welcome to the Best Morning Routine Ever podcast. I am your host, Dr. Lunid, and today I do have the honor of introducing a very special guest to the show, Robert Brace. He is known in the fitness community as the Mind Body Soul Connector and selected by VeryWell.com as one of the top 100 voices in wellness for 2020. Robert is a celebrity wellness expert, creator of the Brace Life app. Motivational speaker, former social um, soloist, ballet dancer, oh wow, and star of the Food Network's weight loss reality show, Fat Chef. So we have a celebrity in the house, y'all. I'm looking forward to this conversation with uh, Mr. Brace himself. Um, so a little bit more about him. In, 20, in 2008, he founded what is known as um, Brace Life Studios, BLS, New York's destination for mind-body transformation. He mm -hmm. is a visionary um, fitness expert, and I want to find out so much more about his background, what led him here, and I'm super excited to, he to hear about his morning routine as well. So with no further ado, Robert, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Uh, appreciate the invitation. <laughs> so yes. Yes, yes, yes. It's an honor to have you on the show. As I was telling you earlier, looking forward to, to hearing about your background. I know you're currently in NYC. So yes. tell us about your journey. My journey. Okay. Well, uh, I am born in London uh, to uh, African immigrant parents. Stayed with my grandparents for quite a while. Uh, became a professional modern and ballet dancer, um, which... Uh, was devastating for my family <laughs> at the time. <laughs> yeah, of African descent, that is hard to swallow. Yeah. You don't want to hear that. It's an engineer or a doctor. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, that's what <laughs> most of the rest of my family became. And so uh, uh, here I come wanting to become a dancer and at, uh, at a late age for, for that career at about 16, 17. Yep. So anyway, um, luckily my body responded. I got some great uh, training and um, I uh, got a scholarship to one of the biggest schools in London. And then that got me a scholarship to the Alvin Ailey School here in New York City. And that's what brought me here. I was supposed to be here for a summer and 20 odd years later, I'm still here. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I uh, had a great dance career. And while I was in, uh, my dance career, I started to, uh, I've always had a spiritual background. And so I started to help out with the performing arts ministry with, you know, everything from emotional issues to people who were dealing with addiction and, and uh, as a way to get to know people in New York as well. And I ended up volunteering more, my group became larger, and I got an opportunity, an offer to intern in a full-time ministry, mm -hmm. um, which was scary because I didn't come here to be in a ministry. And at the time I was offered the job, I had the best dance gig I ever had. So um, I tried it. And then I ended up going into the full-time ministry for six years. I met my wife there. We built a ministry in Harlem. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I had my first child, came out of that, did a few entrepreneurial things and ended up training, which at the time was devastating to me because uh, it's what I did just to get by when I came to New York. Um, and so, but what I found is people loved the ministerial background and the compassionate approach that I have. They loved the fact that I have a ballet background and all of the knowledge that that brings. 
And that began my career from, you know, just a regular personal trainer to having a gym, to doing infomercials, to doing TV, to having an app. And that's kind of my journey. Wow. Yeah, that is uh, quite a journey indeed. And what I think what I, what I love about you and heard that you say is you, you found fitness, not just a physical aspect to it, but a spiritual piece that, that right. was missing that, you know, sure. that, that at the time was refreshing for everyone to, to actually start embodying. Mm -hmm. and, sure. and so tell us how, what's your definition of fitness, like the holistic? Well, listen, I think what happens is for most of us, uh, we see fitness as just physical. And right. I think from, from my experiences, show me, look, when I was dancing, uh, I always felt some kind of, and I didn't know what it was at the time, but some kind of um, process whereby I could work through my emotions. If things weren't going well, it made me feel better. And I thought it was just because I was doing what I love to do. And then I shifted from a physical application to a purely mental application, which was me being in the, in the ministry. Mm -hmm. And both have a connection to spirituality. And so began my, you know, my fascination with that subject. And so on a very basic level, when you talk about spiritual qualities, right? Um, here's the African in me, we have to define it so that, <laughs> so that we yeah. know what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, but what is spiritual qualities? Spiritual qualities are things that everybody wants, right? Not necessarily religion, everyone wants love, joy, peace, a sense of self-control, right? Connection to a community, uh, living in gratitude. These are things that everybody wants and, and they can be quote unquote spiritual qualities, right? Yeah. And so um, we can look at them just with a mental application of who we are, of our being. But also the thing to understand is when we move, the body produces serotonin, which produces joy, yeah. right? When we move, the body produces endorphins, which give us more of a sense of peace and more of a sense of calm. Mm -hmm. uh, you, if you've ever been to a soul cycle class or done something with a, a group of people, like a, a, a physical activity with a group of people, um, the body produces more oxytocin, which is the bonding hormone. You work out and then you get a more oxygen to your brain, which allows you to focus more, right? Mm -hmm. And so all of these, this physical, these physical activities lead to these spiritual qualities. And so um, the way that I look at it is you cannot, yes, there is um, the quest for spirituality, mm -hmm. but you cannot fully find that spirituality or express that spirituality without using the tools that your body has to help you experience them more, right? right. And so that is how the mind and the spirit connect and the mind and the body, uh, uh, sorry, the body and the spirit connect and then the uh, body and the mind, like I said, more oxygen to your brain helps you think more clearly, which helps also um, activate the prioritizing function of the brain. So if you shop too much, eat too much, do anything too much, um, it will help your brain um, regulate your body so that you don't feel those cravings as much. So for me, it's a 360 experience, the mind, the body, the soul, they all work together. Yeah. And I love that, that piece of it, um, hacking the, the body, utilizing what you already have in your disposal, right? What's already available to you. I think that's the right. fastest way to reach that internal innate state that we, we crave right. or desire by actually just utilizing what's already here. Mm -hmm. exactly not, exactly it's not and, outside and you, of us you, exactly we have everything that we need inside of us to experience not only physical change not only at, but, but mental change and as well as the soul level spiritual qualities we just need to access it it's even there's um when you work out if anybody's ever worked out and experienced a runner's high or mm -hmm. that kind of intense workout right yeah yeah um, that's because the body produces something called endocannabinoids and endocannabinoids are the root ingredients of cannabis, right? So your body is naturally producing this hormone, which is known as the bliss hormone, right? So again, 
your body can get you into these states if you continue to use it. It's why there's religions that have a movement as part of their as part of their practice. You know, from Islam to whirling dervishes to there's you see it throughout history. It's why people feel that yoga is a spiritual practice as much as it is physically. Yeah. Um, but these are the reasons why we just have to connect the dots. Yeah, uh, Tony Robbins pre um, preaches about peak state, getting into peak state. And he's, it's, it's exactly what you're saying. It's literally just moving the body, doing what you got to mm -hmm. do. Uh, um, even if it's like five push ups, even if it's just doing the champion hands up in the air to get yep. blood circulating to actually get yeah. that get the body in motion. It, it's really um, moving. Um, mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you give your clients that they can try that's easy? to start with if they are not used to this new um, method? Well, I think people on a format like this, I think people have to start where they're at, right? Because everybody's different. And so it's, you know, what's motivating one person or one person's physical activities are, are different from somebody else's. Yeah. And so for the people who have high energy, maybe they're used to fitness, we do interval training, right? Mm -hmm. Why? It's, uh, we do a specific protocol, a lot of people have heard of it, called Tabata's 20 seconds of intense activity followed by 10 seconds of rest. You repeat that protocol eight times for four minutes. And it works because on a physical level, it's boosting your metabolism. It's one of the fastest ways to help you burn body fat mm -hmm. as well as lean muscle mass, depending on which exercises you're doing. Right. But, and then on the spiritual side, it's pushing you to that limit. So your serotonin is up, again, more joy, endorphins are up, takes the edge off of your stress. And if you really, really, really go hard, then you get into that place where you're activating those endocannabinoids. So you feel a little bit of a high right afterwards, right? Yeah. So there's that. But then for something gentler, um, just deep stretching with breathing. Because as you uh, breathe, there are lots of breathing techniques, and it's one of the simplest things you can do to turn off your fight and flight response. Yeah. Uh, Vegas breathing, five, sec uh, five second deep breath in, followed by a five second long breath out. As you're stretching and as you're breathing, that will shut down uh, the fight or flight response and bring you into a sense of calm. So. Those are two different exercises on the opposite end of the spectrum, the stretching and breathing, yeah. and then the super intense uh, interval training. If for a more advanced individual, but you can start slowly just by starting with breathing and that will start the process. I have this notion yeah. I teach my clients is you can do anything for two minutes. So yep. the five breaths that you're taking, you can start over and over every day with five breaths until you increase that. But you got to start where you are. I love that you, 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 you amplify that because you don't want to do what Tony Robbins is doing or what I'm doing. I'm running five miles. You don't want to start there. Yep. You want to do yep. what works for your body in the moment. And I exactly. think you, you can attest to this is we crave the internal state that we get not the act yep. itself. Nobody likes running. Nobody likes the grinding, <laughs> the knee hurting, the pounding, yeah. and nobody likes that at all. But we have our why has to be big enough. Our reason That's for that, right. the end result has to be big enough for us to push through the pain, the, the grinding, right. the agony of running or even just moving or doing that, that hit workout, intense workout. So, right. So it's important to know what it, why, why are you in it? Why are you doing it? What's your motive? What's your agenda? Do you find that you, you, you have to set that up front as a goal for your clients? It, for some people, again, it depends on the individual, right? I yeah. think, um, look, we, we're privileged enough to see people in a vulnerable state, right? A lot of people we work with, um, uh, you would definitely consider high powered or influential. And so they come into our studio and they're tired sometimes, they've got families, they've got responsibilities. And so we see them in this state and uh, it's our job to help them get out of that. So when you're talking about, do they ask for it? Some people do, but if I know somebody's having uh, in a place of frustration or in, or in a hurried state and they need to release 
um, some of that. Then we'll do our cardio with boxing, right? Mm -hmm. So they're physically channel channeling that energy. Again, their heart rate is up. They're releasing those good, uh, feel good hormones. And so we're guiding them physically, but also we're giving them what they need for, as you refer to it, the internal state. Yeah. Uh, some others have, um, for instance, we had a client recently who, you know, she was going through some emotional issues. And so after our workout in our studio, we have uh, pre-recorded meditations with noise canceling headphones. And we had this one meditation called a mountain meditation, which takes you through um, how to deal with the tough times in your life and realizing that you already have the power within you. So for her, it was helping her move to get the endorphins down, but at the set uh, up, sorry, mm -hmm. but um, at the same time, at the end, giving her this meditation so where she can find some internal introspection, but also gain strength from that. And mm -hmm. so, you know, so she was able to leave uh, feeling a little more relieved, a little more confident. You know, the situation was the same, but her approach and the tools that she was harnessing to deal with the situations were slightly different when she left. So it, it, it depends on the individual. Yeah, it's powerful. And that's why it's a 360 full mm -hmm. body, mind, soul workout where you actually have everything in that, in that center, in the studio, all in one place. Now tell us mm -hmm. about your app. What's included in the app? Meditation, fitness, um, coaching, yes. what do you have? It has all of that. It has meditation, it has fitness classes, everything from our 28 day challenge program was what we're known for physically is transforming bodies in 28 days to ballet workouts, yoga. Then we have these mindful, um, mindful motivation segments, which are short videos about um, specific topics that can add to your wellness, whether it's uh, from looking at um, weight loss in a different way, or it's looking at how to celebrate your beauty or dealing with stress. So we have all of that, but the main focus of the app is to help people live a daily mind, body, and soul lifestyle. And so to that end within the app, uh, the app tracks you know, your engagement with your mind, your engagement with your physicality, your engagement with your spirituality based on which workouts you select. And it helps you, you, you have, there's a graphic that shows you, you know, whether you're leaning too much towards just the body and not enough mind or too much towards the mind and not enough spirit so that you can really see um, how you're doing 360 with the, the mind, body and soul engagement. Because that's our mission is to, yes, look, we got great workouts. We transform bodies. That's what we're known for. We have a, you know, we uh, look on our Instagram page. We, you know, that's the 28 day challenge transformations are, are there. That's almost the easy part. Mm -hmm. It's going beyond that and helping people live that 360 lifestyle in a practical way, step by step. Um, so to that end, there are five minute workouts. There are one hour workouts. There are you know, motivational segments of 18 to 20 minutes, there are two minute motivational segments that so everything that you need to actually live that 360 lifestyle. How do you track that on the app? That's pretty powerful. If you can get that tap into that to to assess. So, <laughs> uh, it is, um, it's, it's done by looking at your engagement in these areas. So we have content from the mind category, the body category, and for the soul category, right? And so depending on, and, and the aim is to do a little bit each day, yeah. right? We try to see if, if you get the first 20 minutes of your day is when your brain is in an alpha stage and that's when you're ready to soak up as much positive information as possible. So we want you to soak up a mind or a spirit um, uh, uh, video or part of the app at that time. And then you get your body in, you know, your workout in one, whenever during the day, in the morning, afternoon, evening, right? Again, from five minutes to an hour. And then when you're resting or if you're having a stressful time during the day, then you work on the spirit, you do a meditation, you do the breathing exercises, right? And the app tracks all of that. So at the end, you have a graphic that shows you how you're doing 
and shows you how you're growing from just a practitioner uh, to a sage and then onto a guru, which is when you've, when you've been doing it for a while, right? And so, you know, people can get that at thebracelife.com. You've got to go to the website, not the Apple store, thebracelife.com and to sign up, they get 14 days free. That is phenomenal. Yeah, of course. I'm glad you shared that. So now we, we have to get into your morning routine. How do you get up, dress up and show up? <laughs> well, my, I love that. Get up, dress up and show up. Um, well, uh, my morning routine is really based on um, uh, one, you talk about the big why. I have two beautiful daughters, I have a beautiful wife and um, you know, my job is to support them in whatever way that I can husband and father. One of the things from my back from my dance in days when I first started dancing, I got some bad training, bad instruction, uh, which led to a back injury, right, which I still have to this to this day, even throughout my career. And so if I don't manage that back injury, it takes me out, I can't work and serve the community that I'm here to serve. I can't be there for my kids, my two daughters, I can't help my wife who has her own business to run, right. And so for me, my morning routine is about setting up my body so that I can be there in all of these ways and show up mm -hmm. in all of these ways for the people that I love and the community that I'm dedicated to building. And so that's the big why. So I get up, um, I usually have a devotional, I say a prayer, I meditate, and then I move around. I just walk around so my body gets acclimated to moving again. Yeah. And then I'll do my morning stretch and core routine, uh, which takes anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. Um, and then um, I'll try to find one moment to sit. It's usually with a cup of coffee for just five minutes, right? Do nothing, take in the day, um, not rush. My biggest thing now is not rushing. So if I need to wake up like 10 to 15 minutes earlier, so that I don't have that rushed energy, right? Mm -hmm. Especially in New York, uh, then, then that's what I do. And that from the prayers, the meditation, getting in touch with my body and that short time of just doing nothing um, before I go out into my day, that sets me up uh, to win. That sets the tone for the day. I love the intentional silence. Yeah for five minutes because yeah. if you're not rushing there's no energy rushing vibe energy going for the rest of the day that was well put. Yeah. thank you for sharing and being candid with us today i really really appreciate your time and and value the morning routine and how it it, it, it contributes to your success continuously and relieving your back pain so you can show up for your family so yeah. Robert, yeah it's been it's been a delight having you on the show thank you Thank you for having me on. Thank you for this discussion. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please comment and tell us what was your favorite part, your favorite habit that you are going to try out for yourself today. Comment below. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Until next time, I will see you at the top of your best morning routine ever. Stay blessed.